thank you for joining us at this last and final uh, training of our learning burst, our building blocks to breastfeeding. And we are going to be talking about breastfeeding policy today, which we had done a policy um, training before. And this is just a summation of like all the different pieces that we've followed through over the whole year of each of the 10 steps. And we're trying to pull it all together. And we've got uh, some great speakers and some one-on-one -on -one time. And we would just really like to get your feedback. Um, next slide. So during our agenda, what we're gonna be talking about is why do we have a policy? What's the point of it? And why are we gonna go through all the levels of adding all these pieces into a policy and what our laws and guidelines are? Also, how to use this policy to get designated um, both locally and our state designation. And then if we have any questions, we want a good back and forth. And we're going to have, uh, Love Anderson is going to be talking with us and we are going to have Kathleen Anderson talking to us. I'm going to have Jen from Beacon talking to us uh, about different pieces of the policy and also Jessica Bridgman from CBGI. So the next piece of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be watching a video that we have started every single one of these trainings with because it sums up what we're trying to do here. We're really trying to do a community piece, a community outreach. So we're gonna watch it one more time. If you've joined us before, you'll get to see it. Is there a place where everyone, regardless of race, economic background, or gender, grows up with the opportunity for good health, a good education, and a good job? This place is not in our heads, but in our hands. It starts with a mother and a baby. Actually, it can start with all of us. It can start with you. When you support a woman's health long before she chooses to have a baby, and when she gets pregnant, you help her receive excellent prenatal care close to her home, where you explain why breastfeeding matters in a manner and language she understands. Before she gives birth, in a baby-friendly hospital you helped establish, where you help her breastfeed her baby right away, allowing her to bond with her baby, who breastfeeds well, and you're always there to help. When this mom and baby go home, you help them some more, and her friends and family do too. And she breastfeeds her baby for at least six months and gets to stay home and care for her baby. And her partner gets time too, because they have paid family leave, thanks to your efforts that made it the law. And when she returns to work, her boss encourages her to take breaks, to pump in a clean space required by the law you helped pass. And there's childcare right there, where people understand why breastfeeding matters, because you led the way. On the weekends, her family shops at a local green market you helped set up, where they buy good food that is local, healthy, and affordable, that helps her child run, play, learn, and grow up in a safe community with clean air and good water. Until one day, many years from now, she gets her own job with good parental leave and has her own child and breastfeeds her. It takes every one of us to create a culture where breastfeeding is the norm and help a community become healthy right from the start. Beginning with one mother and one baby, we can help achieve health equity everywhere. Each and every one of us can make it possible. have equity in our community and we are creating places that are breastfeeding friendly that that supports breastfeeding friendly policies both in the hospitals the community and also in child care that we're going to create this as a long-standing um, community event that will happen forever like we will just create more and more and more Okay, so we'll go on to the next one. This is Love Anderson. She is with uh, Family Friendly, Breastfeeding Friendly Communities, and I'm gonna let her uh, take it away. So I always think it's important when we start talking about policy with why, why, why bother with policies? And one of the things that I come at 
this perspective, uh, this this work as a parent more than anything else. And I always think of the beauty part for policies when I worked with my childcare providers is I felt like it was our, our contract, our agreement, the thing that I would go to and, and read as I'm a desperate new mom trying to figure out everything and not make any mistakes. I'm reading every single piece of paper that they sent home and saying like, how does this work? What am I supposed to do? And um, so one of the biggest benefits of policies is not only is it a way of telling your parents what they're supposed to do, but it's a way of telling everyone in your child care center, every person that you work with to be designated, that this is what our center is supposed to do. This is our commitment of how we, we want things to go. And now everybody's on the same page about how we view our center to be in this relationship with children and families in our community. And um, so that's kind of the, pol the point of writing a pol policies and procedures is so we're all on the same page about what is supposed to be happening. Um, and I also think when it's important, when we're gonna write down what's supposed to be happening, I always start with, well, what, what are the requirements? And one of the things I think about is um, North Carolina law. And I love one of the things that Kathleen Anderson, one of my, she's gonna be typing with us today as we put together a policy. Um, she talked about how we wanted to go beyond just what is required, but also how are we going to start welcoming breastfeeding families? Kathleen, do you wanna share any of your thoughts? Um. I think you summed it up well, though. I think that the law tells us what a parent, the rights of the parent, and it tells us um, what the parent is allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do, right? But it doesn't really speak to welcoming. And I think that in our, when we do a policy, when, we be, when we're working toward the breastfeeding friendly childcare designation, we are thinking about how we welcome breastfeeding into our center. So it goes, goes beyond the may breastfeed in any public or private location to she's welcomed to breastfeed in any public or private location. And I think that has a different tone. Thank you. Natasha, will you remind us what the DCDEE rules are around breastfeeding? Because when I'm writing a policy, I want to know the law, I want to know the rules. Yes. Uh, before I do that, I forgot to ask everyone to please put your name, your center, and your title into the chat so that we have that for our um, uh, hours to give you today. <laughs> And so we can get your certificates out. Um, so when we're talking about the law, the law states that you can breastfeed anywhere. Legally, a woman is now allowed, and I say now allowed because they literally actually had to go to court, Supreme Court. We had to go all the way to the highest courts to be allowed to breastfeed our children anywhere we want to. <laughs> so when you look at the law, the law states that if a mom comes into your child care center, she is, she can breastfeed wherever she wants to. In child care DCDE rules, that's also the same. So she can provide breast milk um, for her child anywhere she would like. Now, the DCDE child care rules state that a child care center has to accommodate. They have to provide accommodations for mothers. So what that means is, is in your breastfeed, in your infant toddler rooms, you have to give a mom the option to come in and either pump or breastfeed her baby with a seat, an electrical outlet, and a nearby water source that's shielded from view that is not a bathroom. And that has just come about just in the last five years. So now each of your childcare centers have to have this as an accommodation so that moms can actually come in and express their milk via pump or um, breastfeeding their baby in the infant room. Now that's the only rules that are required um, at this moment, but I know that we are working on the level um, state level to see if there's some shifts that can be made. And I like what Kathleen said about accommodations too, if you want to <laughs> open that up. But, so when, I know everyone who's watching this video, right? We are all breastfeeding advocates. Everyone who, who showed up, right, has a little bit of interest in breastfeeding. But whether a child care center or child care provider is passionate about breastfeeding or not, it's really important to have a policy at your center to talk about how you're going to accommodate the laws and the rules, regardless of personal perspectives, right? Now, I think the other big question is, how do we do this in COVID, 
right? Um, one of the things I was hoping Jessica from the Carolina Gold Breastfeeding Institute might speak a few minutes about just what, what are the accommodations, what are the rules during COVID for breastfeeding? Jessica? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, love. And I just put um, a link to what you're seeing on your shirt. This looks familiar to everyone here. So this is the North Carolina DHHS Child Care Strong Toolkit that was updated in August. And what it continues to state, and you can see the arrow there, um, so given um, the precautions and exceptions, um, accommodating for breastfeeding is still um, supported and a part of the toolkit, meaning mothers who are breastfeeding are permitted to enter your facility um, during COVID to continue to provide that nutrition to their child. Um, so that has been recognized. Um, it has also been supported through the American Academy of Pediatrics, which you'll find that in the toolkit as well. But that is still something that is being um, supported and is being encouraged and were, uh, allowed and um, should be happening in childcare programs, even through COVID. Um, so that childcare role, um, allowing families to come in and do that is still something that is being um, it, it hasn't been um, modified in a way that families are not able to do that. They are still able to do that even during COVID. Even during COVID. Okay, wonderful. So now we're all on the same page. We know what, what the bare minimum requires, requirements are by the laws, by our, um, by our supervisors, by COVID. We've got that on board. But when I think about writing a policy, I want to... Um, do a little bit more than just what's required. I want to get credit <laughs> for doing the amount of work that's involved in a policy. So what we wanted to start with, um, we've done other presentations about how there's a state designation and some counties there's a local designation. Um, but I wanted to start with the state designation and just our, our gold standard. And can you all still see my screen with the state designation? Give me a thumbs up, somebody. Okay, perfect. So here's the state designation application. And if you scroll down, there's a button to apply now, but I, I'm not ready to apply right now, right? I need to know what I'm doing first. And I think the biggest piece of this whole thing is writing the policy. And if we scroll down, um, there's this button like, easy online application. And then if you want to review a printable copy, click here. Okay, great. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to this. Okay, here's the policy. Oh, okay. We got to write a policy. I'm going to scroll in down. I'm like, where's the policy section? Scroll, 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 scroll. There's going to be some requirements and some data, but all I'm worried about today is just writing my policy. And so if you scroll down, there is a link to, and I hope I'm not going to pass it, list of required topics in your breastfeeding policy. Perfect. I found it. So I'm going to click there. What are my required topics? And I get this beautiful document that lists all the things that I need in my policy. Well, I think we, we know that when we want to have success as teachers, we want to start with the rubric. So my instinct was I wanted to copy and paste this whole thing into a document. But when you click on it, you can't copy it. It's locked. Okay, so we're going shoot. So this is where I brought in Kathleen and I said, Kathleen, I actually don't have the skills to both type and talk at the same time. Um, and so I brought her in and I asked, would you mind being our typist for today as we all come together and talk about a policy? So we actually went ahead for you and we typed up this document into words and we wanted to transform this from a list into an actual policy. So I was hoping that we could, um, Jen, from, Jen Spencer from Beacon, can you wave? Can you say hi, Jen? I'm here. Perfect, welcome, Jen. Jen has volunteered to give us extra information and we're gonna write specifics about her child care center, but I really want everyone who showed up today to get something out of this policy process. So 
whether you're Jen from Beacon, who we're talking about, or, or we're, who we're focusing on today to help us build this work, or if you have other good ideas. And um, I think I'm seeing Patty out there who has done phenomenal work in supporting Jen. I know many of you are supporting child care providers. As we go through this process, I want everyone on our group, because we don't have a huge list, to go ahead and call out suggestions. And um, even if you are a little shy, then you can go ahead and put your suggestions into the chat. And Natasha has volunteered to help read to us because Kathleen's going to be clicking back and forth. So, okay, Jen, are you with me? Yes. Okay, so when I look at the, the rules and requirements, required topics for writing a breastfeeding policy include but are not limited to, number one, clear statement that the program, colon, welcomes breastfeeding families. Okay, so I look at this list, Jen, and I'm, I feel like, does your program do all of these things? Do you welcome breastfeeding families? Do you support families to continue to breastfeed? Do you provide appropriate breastfeeding, um, a friendly and human milk storage spaces, promote exclusive breastfeeding? Do you feel like you kind of have this list as like, yeah, we do those things? We do a lot of those things. Um, we just, we don't at currently have a designated spot. Um, we're transforming my office because I'm the closest to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it's also a bigger open space. It's comfortable. It's got electric outlets. So, but for the most part, yes, we do promote. Um, we do, um, right now it's my assistant's office and it's just, it's small. And it's farther from the bathroom, um, but there is a spot, but it's just kind of crummy. Um, we do um, give babies breast milk bottles. No, we cannot make the bottles. We can't take it from frozen to, you know, and pour it into a bottle. Um, but we do, we pass out um, upon entrance store centers, breastfeeding um, tips and ideas. And there's a, um, a booklet we give them on breastfeeding. Okay. So let's start with the, the first one on, um, oh, Kath Kathleen's jumping. Let's start with welcome, welcomes breastfeeding families. How do you feel like Beacon welcomes breastfeeding families? We discuss it upon, um, if it's an infant or a toddler one, we ask. Um, but no matter what, they always get that. Um, if they're an infant, they get the booklet. Or the, there's two pamphlets um, and a book. Two pamphlets and a book. Yes. All right. And so I, these are great policies. These are great procedures for how you um, welcome breastfeeding families. But part of what we do with a policy is um, we wanna make sure we, we do something kind of wordy and inspiring. Um, what do you think about, I see both Kathleen and Maria are typing, uh, something like <laughs> we actively invite breastfeeding parents to come to our center to nurse their babies while under our care or, um, just something like a, a clear statement of, of, of kind of an idealistic statement of why, why do you believe in this, Jen? Like, I know you're passionate about this. It is something that I, when I had my first, I, I tried, I, this is, you know, how I wanted to take care of my child. My sister breastfed until her children were about two years old. Um, and my grandchild is going to be breastfed. Um, so this is something I want Savannah to be able to come. It gives a whole new perspective. I mean, I breastfed, my sister breastfed, but we, just a few years ago, you had to keep a blanket over you. You had to, it was something that was kind of, you know, embarrassing, I guess, um, to other people. Um, I don't want Savannah to feel that. So, so I want. So Kathleen, Kathleen's ty typing too, but I'm feeling like we're having fun. We, we want every 
breastfeeding. <laughs> we want every family, like Beacon Child Care Center welcomes breastfeeding families. I feel like we need to explicitly mm -hmm. say that to yes. start with. And we have all these great points. How's that? How's that love? I just put it at the top. Beacon Child yes. Development Center welcomes breastfeeding families. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay, good. All right. Do okay. we feel like we've got, uh, we've got all sorts of stuff that's showing up under supports too. Kathleen, do you want to turn that first one? Just do we feel like we've got a good, a good statement on how Beacon welcomes breastfeeding families and a couple of support statements? Jen, do you feel like we're ready to move to the next one? I see Maria's already got some starts on how you support families. Yes. Okay. So, so is there I, anything I, else? Oh, Go ahead. Do you have, um, do you have um, for posters or pictures that, that families might see when they walk in? That... At the entrance, mm -hmm. we have the pamphlets. Um, you know, of course, it's on, it's amongst other things, so it doesn't, you know, jump out at you, but it is, um, it is posted. Um, I don't have the new owner. We don't have a lot of posters hanging on her walls because <laughs> she just painted the place. Um, so I don't have any um, poster posters hanging um, in reference to breastfeeding. I just have my pamphlets hanging up. Okay. I think that sounds perfect. I see, I'm, I'm going to call on some of the people in the chat that, that where I don't know your faces and I'm not sure what your role in the community is, but I'm seeing Kathy Smith and I'm seeing Jennifer Anderson. I want to invite you to add something to the chat or to, to chime in here. It, do you feel like you're, that you feel comfortable when you write your breastfeeding policy that you're ready to address bullet one on how your center welcomes breastfeeding families? Yes, ma'am. I see a nod. I was looking at yes. some of our other participants yes. too. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, supporting breastfeeding supports families to continue to breastfeed as long as they pursue employment or education by making them comfortable and welcomed in our center to make space for them. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. We've got it all of that. Yes. We've got that. All right. Perfect. So what about provides appropriate breastfeeding friendly and human milk storage spaces? We do have that. We have refrigerator in our nursery to store breast milk, and we have um, crock pot warmers to warm that milk. So, and they know it's right in the room. They know that if they pump, they can store it in our freezer. That's the infant room? Yes, ma'am. Jen, do you have the poster um, from Department of Public Health that talks about appropriate storage of human milk posted in that infant room? Um, I have the or one from the USDA. Mm -hmm. Great. That's the one that um, we currently use. Um, that's where we got our, um, our, book, our booklet and our breastfeeding um, is from the CACFB. Perfect. So one of the things as I'm looking through this, I, I, I know Jessica sounds a little wonky today, but I immediately think about, for those of you who've attended other presentations, the 10 steps to breastfeeding friendly childcare. And we know that a lot of research has gone into those 10 steps and that they're kind of the, the gold standard for this work. Uh, and so when I look at, I always think it's not always nice to borrow some of the language from those pieces. I see in um, under supports families to continue to breastfeed as they pursue employment. I think about um, step three, um, about how you provide information. I think about step five, ensure that families um, we serve are able to provide storage and label their milk. There's really great language in those 10 steps. Mm -hmm. Love, I can pull some language <laughs> from those places and pop them in there if you'd like to see what it looks like. From Perfect. Step three and step five. Would step, you like to see Yeah, that? step three, step five. And step six, I think. And it's actually, actually step six nine works and well, nine. well. It's a bunch. So I'm Do you want to just pop it in? in? 
Okay, let me pop them in. Oops, Maria, I'm going to pop something in right now. So these are from step, and I'm going to grab step nine. Um, and these are just, and the red is actually not in the step, but it's something I just added to it. So um, something I like to see in there as well. Um, but in step three, so you're providing, um, it, it, step three is to provide um, information about the importance of breastfeeding. So you may have the written policy, which is a great way of showing your your breast your welcoming breastfeeding you display again culturally appropriate educational materials cgbi carolina global breastfeeding institute has some of those free to download jessica dana i'm pretty sure and um, you can distribute them to the families that you serve um, and th the things you want to think about in your policy is when do you do this i think you mentioned before jen you do it at at enrollment or during mm -hmm. the times that they're coming to visit you, get to know your place. Then, or how might that look? You know, is it, are you doing it, Jen? Or is it teachers showing in the classroom, depending on the age of the child? You know, all those things that you might even do a newsletter or you might do emails to parents. Those are all opportunities to um, provide that information. Okay. So you might not even realize how much you're already doing or how many opportunities you already have, right? Right. So, um, so yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Liv. No, you go. So I'm literally gonna write on my piece of paper here that I have off to the side. I'm gonna write one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And I'm gonna hit do check boxes to make sure that while we're writing this policy, we get all of 10 steps referred to because like I said, when I write a policy, I want to get my credit <laughs> and get designated. And I wonder if, Jessica, if you might be able to find a link to the 10 steps and put it into the chat just over any time, just for those people who are following along on the recording so that they'd be able to see it as well. So yeah, sure. I can do that. And I also... Um... The uh, COVID um, considerations also has a side-by-side -side comparison of the 10 steps. So I just put that into the chat so you can see it there. And the other thing I wanted to mention, um, so I think uh, I heard someone mention the CACFP human milk storage guidelines. And I just wanted to point out that those don't always have um, the state specific guidelines. So um, mm. Those do say have a little, uh, there's a little slight difference there. Um, so they recognize um, something different nationally than um, yeah. each state does have variations. So just wanted to point that out. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank um, you. Hey, I did, I did pull up it. It's just what I had copied in my files, but the human milk storage guidelines that CGBI um, came up with that they can post so Kathleen, help me. I always thought that the biggest, so, or maybe Natasha, who is the official standard for milk storage guidelines? Um, is it, is it CGBI in North Carolina? And I can't share. I think I'll the see. state is who childcare providers need to, are held accountable to. Yes. We, yeah. we had, at the time I was there, it, we followed what it, what those rules were, but if they changed, then you, you have to, to go with what the, your licensing requires. That's yeah. correct. Children's Environmental Health um, has those standards that are required for the human milk storage, refrigeration and freezer temperatures. But Patty, thank you so much for bringing that to our attention because that is the one tricky bit is that sometimes the, the actual numbers listed by CGBI for milk storage can be, because it varies from state to state, and the Carolina Global Breastfeeding Institute is the has that global perspective, that um, it's really important we do that, the state numbers. And I always get so confused with that. Yes, the NC guidelines that's are the same. The only difference is um, that the environmental health rules have changed to heating breast milk um, storage but also um, crock pots and uh, bottle warmers. So everyone that's writing policies in your county, go ahead and look up your environmental health rules um, to make sure that you're on, that you're doing what your environmental health requires. They trump everything with the rules. All right. So I wanna bring it back to Jen. Step three. Do you feel comfortable with what we have written here that we provide information to families about the importance of breastfeeding and, and the whole paragraph? Because Jen, if, you, if your center 
doesn't believe it, doesn't do it, if it doesn't work for you, we should pull it out. What do you think? We do provide information um, okay. on breastfeeding and how important it is in the um, positive aspects of it, the health benefits and um, the, the, yeah, you know, the bond you create, it's, it's all in the pamphlet. It's all in the, the booklet. It's in the booklets, yes. It's all in the pamphlets. And we've talked about the, the pamphlets you. already. Yes, it tells you about the health benefits of breastfeeding. And and you provide these at, you said, at either enrollment or when they come to visit, right? Yeah, it is in our, we have an application and then we also have um, an infant packet that has the, the feeding schedule, the welcome letter um, and all that. And then the breastfeeding booklet and the pamphlets are in that infant pack. Got it. So the, it's, in, it's in part of the application slash infant pack. Yes. Pack. Good. Nice. All right. Um, good. We can just take those away. We can take those away. And Jen, is it helpful for us to leave in parentheses the three um, from using that's from step three? Or would you like us to delete that? It's fine. OK. okay. And then um, so step five. Do you, does Beacon ensure that all breastfeeding families we serve are able to properly store and label their breast milk? And yes. I mean, I think we've elaborated here, but are there any words in the section you want us to change? Can you I think you've mentioned all of that. I, I wasn't sure about yes. the family it's part, but if you're instructing families, that's the part I couldn't remember, but yeah. Yeah, it sounds like that's all. Yes, right. if they um, are breastfeeding or they come and they pump, um, they are, um, well, I'm going to check into our guidelines now. <laughs> um, they're shown the proper storage. We have Sharpie markers, um, and, um, masking tape to put on the thing where they can put the date and all that on there. Um, but they have to take it home at the end of the day. Okay. Because we cannot make their bottles. Okay. So parents have to take it home at the end of the day yes, and can't make their bottles. Mm -hmm. Any breast milk that is either expressed and put in our freezer or in a bottle has to be gone at the end of the day. At the end of the day. That's, that's good. I, I love that you put, that you said, well, we give them the, we give them the masking tape and um, a marker because even though we tell, may discuss it, parents forget. So it's really nice. I love that idea. We have, we have labeling materials right there with us. Mm -hmm. okay. So what about step six? We provide a breastfeeding friendly environment. And I think we've talked a little bit about some of the things you do, but we actively invite um, mothers to come to our center to nurse their babies while under our care. Um, there is a clean and comfortable place in our center other than a bathroom for mothers to sit and nurse their babies or pump and express milk if desired. Um, our center displays, we, we said, you said fewer posters, we don't, right? We do but, not have posters. Right. Kathleen, do you see right there? Um, maybe materials? Um, yeah. It's gone. Perfect. Thank you. Um, do you, does it, do we, does it include any photos reflecting the families that you serve? We do not currently have pictures of our families up, no. Okay, so. Could, but okay, but but do your just materials reflect the families that you serve in your program? They may not be specifically about, um, with images that look like your families is what the, the diversity okay. in your families and the. the um, we do distribute the material, like mm -hmm. I said, upon, um, there's a packet for interest and it, we have parents that come and tour prior to birth. Those are the ones we really push the packets into their hands, even if they're not going to sign up with us that day or, you know, get on the, our waiting list, um, that they know that benefits out there. Mm -hmm. And I think so even if they choose another center, they, they were given that information on you know, the benefits. 
And I, I think one of the points of this discussion is that Jen and, and I think Beacon Child Care Center that you're an expert on your county and your community and you don't have pictures of like uh, I'm from Durham the Durham Bull in the background um, in Durham we have lots of pictures of people sitting at the Durham Farmers Market and around downtown Durham with these big city icons mm -hmm. and you know that's not right for centers that are in rural North Carolina um, they, they want you to see that it reflects the cultures of the family that you yes. you work with we have multicultural um, throughout the, the booklet. Um, like I said, we have no posters. So I, do, I don't have anything like that other than in our booklet and in our pamphlets. Perfect, okay. And it, it's something to think about too, to go ahead and put up a poster. I feel like that's one of the questions in uh, the, the state designation um, mm -hmm. that they ask for images. And that's, you know, something to consider but it's okay. okay and I think I'll talk to I'll talk to the owner and so, I think it's oh go ahead oh sorry to interrupt the but the one of the most you know one of the things that you're required as a child care director is to put up images mm -hmm. in in your rooms in your infant toddler rooms yes. and in your three to fives and your and, you know all the age groups that reflect not only the you know, the participants and the children, they are culturally, racially, but also in different aspects. So one of the things to think about is like the posters that you're putting up or the pictures or anything that you're using, um, just think about the different goals that you have and, and that that's your reasoning right there. You don't actually have to have it throughout the center. You can have one poster on the front of your, uh, maybe on your door as administrator uh -huh. on the front of the building, but also in the infant toddler room. That's actually what the application requires. Okay. It's encouraged to have it throughout the center so that when a person walks in the door, they know. Um, that's kind of like the, the encouragement. Okay. But the requirement is the infant toddler room. And so, yeah, but you can okay. also use pictures of your current parents which is one of my centers does. She has pictures of her parents and her staff that's been breastfeeding and they've allowed her to take pictures and then they put them on poster board and put them up. Okay. See, I would be very interested, but I currently don't have any breastfeeding yeah. mothers. Maybe your, maybe your grain baby. <laughs> when she gets here in February, by all means, I will take her. I'll use her. I see Maria. Go yeah, ahead. I was also going to say, you know, CGBI now has these beautiful new posters. Um, and even if your owner just painted and everything like that, um, you could print one of those, uh, one or two of those really pretty new ones out and even frame them and hang them out in your lobby. And they're just, they're so pretty and beautiful and they're diverse and, you know, they're not just some poster you stuck up, you know what I mean? You could frame them and really highlight them in the, in, in the front. And I think the, I think the two that come that have the purple border that, you know, say our, our center supports breastfeeding. Um, it's got the list of things. I think those are really helpful and, and good looking and you can download them right off the website, print them on your printer. Um, but you could frame them, you know, you could make them nice so that they, that, that your owner feels good about hanging them up on the newly painted walls. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jim's there all. Well, um, and I think this is a, such a good intersection because let's say that you're not like Jen and you got a new grandbaby coming, um, that you're a child care center in another place that this step nine about how do you coordinate with your local breastfeeding support resources. This is a really interesting opportunity here because one of the things you might consider is connecting with some of your local breastfeeding support to get um, to do a photo shoot, you know, of some breastfeeding families to get pictures that match your community. Jen, how have you, do you have a list of breastfeeding resources that are local? You're in Randolph County, is that correct? Yes. And do you have a, a list that you share in that pamphlet that has the local resources no. for Randolph County? No, you don't? Patty's my only resource. Patty's your <laughs> she only gives resource. Me, she gives me links. And okay. yes, and I have I have a list of our, our county resources to share with her. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Perfect. So is it okay if we leave that in? Um in there yes. that okay, perfect. Um so go ahead. I want, it does say refer, but I think it's important to give parents the to give them the opportunity to see the list and choose on their own 
oftentimes what's the best options. I don't know what Randolph County looks like for lactation support for parents, for breastfeeding support resources, but if there's more than one, it's nice if they see them all. So uh, Jen and Patty, when you have that list, you know, it's it just even just offering the list to the parents may be um, something that they may feel better about because it gives them the option of choosing best for their needs. I yeah, could put I, it in with an yeah. infant packet. Yeah, I can yes. definitely, you know, make copy of that. She can include the whole thing. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I can do that. Are we good then, okay. love? Good I think thing. we're good. I mean, this took a little while. Um, I, I realized this, but this was our first, kind of our, our first point about how you take the rubric from the state designation and then you go through and customize it, pulling in from these 10 steps, the breastfeeding friendly child care designation that we've been talking about during these building blocks. So I wanted everyone to see that process. Let's see, we got five minutes left. Let's see if we can do one more talking about how does Beacon promote exclusive breastfeeding practices for the first six months of life? Jen, what do you think? That, that means um, that you, you don't encourage um, the introduction of other solids like, um, do you have- oh. We don't give them cereal. It's, okay. They are told um, upon enrollment um, that it says in our infant feeding, we have two infant feeding guides that, and it's on both of them, that until six months, they're not um, given solid foods unless we have a doctor's note. Perfect. Unless you have a doctor's note. Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Because we have some that are spit up babies and the doctors will prescribe them cereal. And well, then, I also, uh, I'm ahead. sorry, I wanted to just update from the chat. There were two questions. One was from Patty wondering, and maybe Jessica knows the answer, if the CGBI materials have been updated, the ones with the purple border, because the ones that Patty has were written in 2014. So I don't know if they're updated or not, but I'm thinking they may be. And then, um, oh, she just answered it. They're up to date on the website. And, yeah. uh, and the other thing I wanted to say, because Jennifer had made the suggestion that when Jen was um, uh, reaching out to other breastfeeding resources, not only could you share that information with your families, but you might wanna share information about your child care center with those resource people, the lactation consultants, et cetera, to let them know you are a breastfeeding friendly child care program in case they are trying to refer families. Um, so that's good to know. That's yeah, an excellent also, suggestion. Well, it really sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. But you can also do the CBGI rat card on how to find breastfeeding friendly child care um, and put your information on there. Yes, that's a great idea. You, so that, that's a great idea too. All right, so it, when we, we're looking at this stuff about promoting exclusive breastfeeding, when I come back to those 10 steps to a breastfeeding friendly child care center, I'm seeing step two. Kathleen, do you wanna pop in the language from step two? Because that gets one more of those steps done. And it also overlaps with step five, but we, we did touch on that one. Do you want to pop in well, some I'm of that I'm going to pop them both in, if, if that's okay. Where are you on? You're still promoting exclusive breastfeeding? Is yeah. that where you are? Okay. Um, so let me put from step two. I, yes, I did see that, you're, that the staff is trained on age-appropriate infant feeding practices, um, including the proper storage and handling of human milk. And then number five. Is that what you were looking for? Yes. Um, Jen, do you, feel, do you feel good about step two that... This is some language just so that you were able to pass the, the designation that uh, they're looking for that Beacon trains and evaluates all staff and the skills to support and promote optimal infant feeding and young child feeding. Um, does that feel like we can um, start training even our um, other teachers right now it's just the infant toddler teachers that have that train that I push that training on, but I can ask that all of my teachers start taking it. I, I think that they look for all the staff in part of the state designation um, a, a little bit because, you know, one of the things they talk about is it's often the person you don't expect who 
can cause a parent to feel uncomfortable. You know, it's that person who, who, who sees you breastfeeding or who makes the yuck face. It's really important that everyone in your childcare center has just a little bit of understanding okay. about the benefits of, of, of breastfeeding and that it's your policy and your center to welcome and support breastfeeding families. I love, okay. or somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And, and I totally agree with love is saying to get everybody educated, but officially my understanding was all the infant and toddler teachers, the director, the chef, and at least one teacher from all the other classrooms. So if you have a yes. teacher and an aide, they from the in the three year old class, they don't both have to be trained, but one of them does. Am, am I right? Oh. Uh, yes, Patty. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The only encouragement is is that the full staff has had some kind of like. Uh, connection like maybe a little staff reminder or an update so like during a staff meeting you can say this is something that we're going to be talking about yeah. and um, Jim did you um did you start going on the breastfeeding university trainings I have I have some of them that I've so I've, that's what they've I've, been trained on that's what that's what you're sharing okay. with them though okay not yet no okay. we've not had a staff meeting um for me to, I did mention in our staff meeting that I was going to start working towards this, okay. but nobody was officially trained okay. on how to store and. But I think I gave you the links for the breastfeeding university. Yes, you I did. Have. I have them um, bookmarked okay. into my. Okay, computer. I want to make make sure I had done that. And Jen and I do have a meeting scheduled um, next week to kind of go over the whole. Um, application process that you know um together one-on-one -on -one, so perfect she's I mean, awesome <laughs> Jen, you're awesome jen you're doing a great job this is hard to be asked all these questions and to come up with things on the spot so thank you for all this that you've offered i appreciate your help so well thank you and i think one of the things we demonstrated here is how important it is to bring in your ta um to to help with the pre with with writing your policy and working together to make it all to make it all work together um but i wanted to make sure that we we took an opportunity just to see if anyone has any questions but you saw what what this looks like to go through it point by point with some technical assistance and looking at those 10 steps and 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 hopefully this has brought together all of the things that we've been talking about for the last um this is 10, 10. Um, so that you can see how it all starts to come together. And I wonder if anyone has any questions, any specifics, anything that we missed about the process. Ooh. Could I offer something? Well, yes, please. So the document that we were looking at before we started making it specific to Beacon um, would that be helpful to have as one of the resources as when you take this um, this particular training webinar that when you come away you have this that you can type on because I think that that's what makes it really nice is when you see everything right in front of you oh that's what they're asking sure I can pop this in and this and is that helpful is there some way we could create something would that be useful because right I'd appreciate now, it type on. yeah I think that that could be great. One of the resources um, that we send out after the presentation could include this. That would be awesome. Top typing on. That would be perfect. Yeah, that would be I have really, I've got a lot from, I appreciate any and all help that my center can get. And the, this puts me one step closer to, you know, my dream of, you know, having something for everybody in my center then and that includes breastfeeding um then i appreciate it all the help well thank you so much well, um for help today yes i want to make sure we've got six minutes left natasha i wanted to make sure that um someone goes uh, go ahead and puts the post evaluation link in the chat and i wanted to remind those any of you who are able to stay on um after two o'clock that um, Kathleen and I are available to stay on. And Jen, if, if you are available, you're welcome to stay. Um, and we can continue to develop the policy through all of these blocks. I think 
one of the things we talked about is it's hard to write a policy from scratch and just it is. Um, and, and just an hour. And Jen and I talked about this in advance. I was like, I don't think we can get through the whole thing. <laughs> I just have to go real quick and um, help out with, um, I pass out snack and milk. Oh, perfect. Well, you go, go ahead. And, um, and if anyone else has any specific questions for their child care center, we will stay on. Um, but um, uh, otherwise you can feel free to enjoy your day. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for joining us. And go ahead and put your name and your center information in the chat as the follow up and complete your post eval. Oh, sorry, yeah, Jen. please click on that link in the post eval um, in the chat to uh, make sure that you. And also to remind everyone, this is our last training, but we are going to be having these on Moodle. So they will be updated to where you can access access them and get hours, um, hopefully by January. So we will send them out to all participants. Thank you for presenting with us today, Jen. That's been so helpful. You're very welcome. Thank you, Jen. Always right. great to work with you. Always, Patty. This is great. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.